Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's July 2nd. Do you have delphinium in your garden? I used to start out every summer by planting 20 delphinium in front of my porch. By the time my red lilies were popping, my delphinium would be about four feet tall. In that same area, I had planted white as still be and alyssum, and I had a little red, white, and blue garden under my American flag for the 4th of July. Delphinium is one of the birth flowers for the month of July. It's also known as night spur and lark spur. During the Victorian age, people essentially used flowers as emojis. The delphinium symbolized lightness and an open heart. Here's today's brevities. It was on this day in 1846 that the British naturalist and women's rights activist Marion Farquharson was born. As a botanist, Farquharson had specialized in ferns and mosses. Farquharson had petitioned the Linnaean Society for four years to allow women into the society. In 1904, 83% of the society voted to elect women members. When the first 15 women were nominated, Farquharson was the only one not to be elected on that day in 1904. It took four more years for Farquharson to be elected to the society in March of 1908. Sadly, she was too ill to attend to sign the register. Farquharson died from heart disease in Nice in 1912. And it was on this day in 1893 that the Welsh landscape gardener, architect, and author Ralph Hancock was born. Hancock created several famous gardens across Wales, England, and the United States. One of his most famous works is the Rooftop Garden at the Rockefeller Center in New York. Hancock designed his rooftop garden in 1934. It was really cutting edge at the time. In an interview, he said, The days of penthouse gardening in boxes are over, and miles and miles of roof space in every metropolis in this country remain to be reclaimed by landscape gardening. Hancock's rooftop garden was called the Gardens of Nations, and it featured gardens for eight different countries around a central Old English tea house and cottage garden. Hancock's Gardens of Nations required 3,000 tons of earth, 100 tons of natural stone, and 2,000 trees and shrubs, and they were all delivered by the service elevator or by man using a block and tackle. The 11th floor Garden of Nations opened on April 15, 1935. Nelson Rockefeller was in attendance as well as students from Bryn Mawr College. The young women arrived wearing costumes from the various nations, and there's a beautiful photo of Nancy Nickel wearing a kimono in the Japanese garden. And it was on this day in 1940 that the St. Joseph Gazette reported that Dr. Hugh Cutler of St. Louis had discovered two species of plants in Utah. They were the wild bridal wreath and a crucifer, and he sent the specimens via airmail to Washington University at St. Louis. And it was on this day in 2018 that NASA's space botanist, known as EcoStress, birthed at the space station. EcoStress's mission is to measure the temperature of plants from space. In today's Unearthed Words, we honor Herman Hesse, who was born on this day in 1877. He was a German-born poet, novelist, and painter, and he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1946. Hesse had a special appreciation for trees, and I thought I'd share some of his prose with you today. 
trees are sanctuaries. Whoever knows how to speak to them, whoever knows how to listen to them, can learn the truth. A tree says, a kernel is hidden in me, a spark, a thought. I am life from eternal life. The attempt and risk that the eternal mother took with me is unique. Unique the form and veins of my skin, unique the smallest play of leaves in my branches, and in the smallest scar on my bark. I was made to form and reveal the eternal in my smallest special detail. Today's book recommendation is Seasonal Flower Arranging by Ariella Shazar. As Shazar says in the introduction of her book, I use as many blossoms as possible that are in season. I don't want to see a tulip in August or a peony in September. I love them in their season, but when that season passes, it's time to move on. Shazar is a professional floral designer, and she provides step-by-step instructions for 39 seasonal floral arrangements. A pioneer in the farm-to-vase movement, her book is a delightful reminder to gardeners that they can bring their garden indoors and create exciting compositions with cut flowers. For today's garden chore, multiply your Solomon seal through division. All you need to do is split the large white tubers. Make sure that each piece has at least one large bud. And if you want to plant in drifts, use lots of small pieces and plant them close together instead of using one large clump. Finally, here's something sweet. To revive the little botanic spark in your heart. On this day in 1932, the Sydney Morning Herald shared a story of attempted murder. Richard Vetstein was responsible for the botanical garden of the University of Vienna. A year after his death, the new head of Vienna University, Dr. Abel, had just finished giving a speech after unveiling a statue dedicated to Vetstein. Suddenly, an older professor named Carl Schneider pushed through the crowd, saying, at last we settle an old score. His revolver shot went wide, and luckily the mayor of Vienna seized the old man before he could shoot again. The excitement of his commemoration was a far cry from the persona of Vetstein, who was known for his courteous demeanor, and he was a wonderful speaker. On more than one occasion, he was considered a potential contender for the president of Austria. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener, and remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.